Hi there, Kim Kunkel here, owner and designer over at EasyDigitals.com, time-saving backgrounds and templates for photographers. Today I have a three-part series for you. In part one, I'm going to extract a player from the background. In part two, I'm going to go over the layers of the Victory Light set. And in part three, I'm actually going to add the player to the background. So I'm going to go to File, Open, and I already extracted my player from the background, so here it is. If you look closely, you can see that what I did was I made a separate layer that I duplicated and then I just made the top filled in with black. And I do have a separate video for this, which I'll be happy to link below this one so that I can do some special things with this shadow. So this is the photo that I already extracted. One thing about this template is if you have a photo that has a really dark background, like a black background, it may not work well with this template. This photo had lighting on both sides of his face. So it's a great candidate for this backdrop. Um, let me go ahead and pull this off to the side and I'm gonna select both layers and drag it in. View, fit on screen. Okay, let me find my, here it is. Okay, I actually should have selected your player here before I drag this in. So it would go right above it. But I'm gonna go ahead and drag it down right here. I'm going to say view, fit on screen, control, Control O. I really should memorize that shortcut. Okay. Now I I'm going to go ahead and change this into a smart object. That makes it less destructive. So I'm going to select these two layers and I'm going to make this smaller and place it. Okay. Now let's zoom in on this and see what's going on. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this shadow layer and I'm going to change it to multiply. One of the things I definitely want to do is I do not want to have it on this background. So let's go over to the grass and see how this looks. And I want to turn off the smoke because it's making it hard for me to see what's going on here. So we can also turn off these layers real quick. And we can just like, we're, let's just go through these. Okay, I've got that darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, darker color. That one actually looks really good. I like that. I'm gonna leave that one for now. But let's say you didn't have a shadow at all. I wanna show you a little trick I learned from one of my designers. Um, go ahead and select the gradient tool. Make sure you have black and add a new layer underneath and add a little circle here. And then you transform it. And we're just, we're not trying to make it perfect. We're just trying to sell the illusion. And then we're gonna take it. I'm just gonna do Control J and make another one. Move it over here. And you can just keep tweaking this until you like it. And then we're going to take a new layer and take do one more that's a little bit bigger. This is the one that really sells it. This is the little secret trick that really makes the difference. And for this, I might even put it in the front because of the lighting in the back. And I will check and see which mode looks best. So we've got darken, multiply, color burn, linear burn, darker color. I like darker color and I'm going to reduce it. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So that's a trick you can do if you don't have a shadow at all. But I brought a shadow in from the other, from the other one. So I can actually turn these off, but I still like the big one. All right, so view fit on screen. Now let's go ahead and make a change to the text. So this is what we want it to look like when we're finished. So I've got this off to the side and I am going to keep making changes. Select a color from his uniform and then I'm gonna push it to where I want it. I'm going to go ahead and expand this. So I'm pressing shift and dragging out 
this corner. You have to make sure you get the corner. And then I'm going to arrow up, press enter. I'm going to turn back on these. And I'm going to change this one to yellow. If I double clicked it, I'm going to change this one to red. I'm going to double click it and pick a color in his uniform. Nice salmon color. Now I'm going to lower, take this a little bit darker. Then I'm going to turn on the text. We can change that as well. Put that, okay, hover over this. Cap lock on. If you want to change anything about the text, you can change the font and everything up here. This was, has the effects, so you can turn those off and then you can modify them by double clicking. And then you can add anything else that you want to add while you're in here. So if I'm on drop shadow, I can make it a bigger drop shadow and make all those changes. You could add a drop shadow to this name down here. Okay, so that's looking pretty good, but I do see a fringe on my player. So I'm gonna double click the, the player. I'm gonna, now it opened up my smart object. So I'm gonna add another layer and I'm gonna fill it with black. So I'm pressing, since my black is on top right here, I'm pressing Alt Backspace and it's gonna fill it with black. Now I can really see my fringe on his legs. And I'm going to come up here to the mask and press Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur. So let's see how it looks. Oop, I need you to see this, okay. So that's one and I'm gonna go with that. Then I'm going to take this mask and press Control L to bring up levels and push this over to the right until I see the fringe disappear. Um, if you don't want this to affect the hair, you can select around uh, so it doesn't mess up the hair. But for me, on this hair, I think it looks fine, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to turn this layer off or throw it away, and then I'm going to close this up. Now I think it looks better. There's no fringe. But I can double click my player and add an outer glow and in white and make it as big as possible. Then right click it, create layer. Now it's on its own layer. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then just decide how much of a blur I want to give that to make it blend. And then you're going to need to either put it underneath the shadows or mask it because you don't want the, it to mess up the shadows under his feet. One of the things that I always like to do with all the templates is to add something in front so that it looks like the person is really in the template. And that's kind of one of the effects I get with this smoke. I love smoke uh, in my templates. I would add them to every template if I think thought you guys wouldn't get bored with it, but I still may do it and then you can just turn it off if you don't like it, but I just love the way the smoke looks. So the smoke is on and like I said before, you can turn it or do whatever you want with it and you can add the haze if you want. So at this point, it would just be a matter of adding drama to the player if you wanted to do more work with him, if you wanted to make it a little bit more grungy or more sharp, desaturate it a little bit is another um, option for the player. And I have some other tutorials on that. I will add a link below this to, on how to add drama to a composite. But that is the basics of this template. If you have any questions, let me know. I'll always be here. If you like it, go ahead and click like, tell your friends, and have a creative day.